Welcome to another captivating journey with We Are Saintly Saint of the Day series. In this video, we invite you to join us on a transcendent journey across the globe. In this captivating video, we explore Catholic pilgrimage sites around the world, intertwining the profound spirit of travel to see Saint Matthew. Whether you're a devoted pilgrim, an adventurer with a heart for spirituality, or someone drawn to the global tapestry of faith, this video is your passport to a unique pilgrimage experience. Let's get started. How can I make a Catholic pilgrimage to see St. Matthew? Going on pilgrimage to sites associated with saints provides a meaningful way to honor their holy lives and seek their intercessory prayers. For devotees of St. Matthew, planning a pilgrimage to sites connected to the Apostle can enrich spiritual life and relationship with God. Here are some tips for making a Catholic pilgrimage to places where St. Matthew lived and served. Research locations linked to St. Matthew like the Church of St. Matthew in Jerusalem near the traditional site of his martyrdom. The Basilica of St. Matthew in Salerno, Italy also houses relics of the saint and makes a worthy pilgrimage site. Other options are cathedrals or churches named for St. Matthew across Europe and beyond. Look into pilgrimage tours offered through Catholic travel agencies. Joining a guided tour can simplify logistics while providing spiritual nourishment. You also journey alongside fellow devotees. If visiting independently, book accommodations and transportation in advance. Try to stay at hotels, hostels, or guesthouses run by religious orders when possible for added spirituality. Prepare by studying accounts of St. Matthew's life and praying novenas or the St. Matthew prayer in the months beforehand. Spiritual readiness amplifies the graces awaiting. Bring along holy reminders of St. Matthew like a printed image, prayer card, medal, or book on his life. Have a pilgrimage diary to record graced moments and spiritual insights. Participate in liturgies, prayer services, or other celebrations in honor of St. Matthew at the pilgrimage sites. Let your devotion come alive. With prayerful planning, a pilgrimage following in the footsteps of St. Matthew promises moving experiences of grace and growth in the spiritual life. What other Catholic things are there to see in Jerusalem? Here are some other significant Catholic sites and experiences to seek out when visiting Jerusalem. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre. This church built over the sites where Jesus was crucified, buried, and resurrected is one of the holiest pilgrimage destinations for Catholics. Take time to prayerfully walk the stations of the cross along the Via Dolorosa leading to the church. The Cynical, also known as the Upper Room. This is the site where the Last Supper is believed to have taken place and where the Holy Spirit descended at Pentecost. Celebrate Mass at this profoundly important location. The Garden of Gethsemane, ponder Christ's agony and prayer in the Garden on the Mount of Olives where he was later betrayed by Judas. The ancient olive trees still growing here provide a powerful place for meditation. St. Peter in Galicantu, this Catholic church commemorates where St. Peter denied knowing Jesus three times before the cock crowed. A golden rooster sits atop the church as a reminder. St. Anne's Church in the Pools of Bethesda, the perfectly preserved Crusader church stands near the site of the pools where Jesus healed a paralyzed man. Immerse yourself in the sights and experiences that bring the Bible and our Catholic faith alive in the holy city of Jerusalem. Follow in the footsteps of Jesus, the apostles, and the early church fathers during your spiritual pilgrimage. What other Catholic saints are there to see in Jerusalem? Here are some significant Catholic saints connected to sites that pilgrims can visit in Jerusalem. Saint Peter, as one of Jesus' original twelve apostles and the rock on which Christ built his church. Sites connected to Saint Peter such as the Cynical and Saint Peter in Galicantu are important places to pray and reflect on Peter's leadership. Saint Anne, the mother of the Virgin Mary and Jesus' grandmother, has a perfect intact crusader church named after her at the site of the pools of Bethesda. Saint John the Baptist, pray at the grotto of Saint John in the church of Saint John the Baptist near the old city where John was born and grew up in the hill country of Judea. Saint James, the site of the martyrdom of Saint James is marked by Saint James Cathedral in the Armenian quarter of the old city just inside the Jaffa Gate. Saint Mark, listen to the words of Mark's gospel resonate at the small church of Saint Mark built over the traditional site of Mark's home in Jerusalem and where the Last Supper was hosted. Saint Stephen, remember the first Christian martyr while visiting St. Stephen's Church near Lion's Gate marking where Stephen was stoned to death as described in the Book of Acts. Walking where these holy saints walked in Jerusalem connects us physically to the courageous men and women who helped build the early church. Their examples of faith continue to inspire pilgrims through the centuries. Making travel arrangements to see St. Matthew Once you have decided on the destinations for your pilgrimage to see St. Matthew, it's time to make the necessary 
luxury travel plans. Here are some tips. Book flights, trains, or other transportation well in advance to get the best fares and availability. Be sure to connect all destinations if traveling to multiple pilgrimage sites. For overseas trips, ensure you have any required travel visas and valid passports ahead of time. Reserve hotel rooms at each pilgrimage stop. Opt for modest accommodations endorsed by the local DOCs or parish if possible. Arrange ground transportation like trains, buses, taxis, or car rentals to get around within each location. Check routes and schedules. Joining a guided pilgrimage tour takes care of logistics but traveling independently allows more flexibility. Choose based on personal preferences. Get travel insurance in case last-minute changes are needed. Also useful if any health issues arise on the trip. Have needed travel-sized toiletries, medications, and materials for your spiritual preparations packed and ready to go. Get phones unlocked for international use if needed and have backup charging options for devices. With strategic travel arrangements in place ahead of time, your pilgrimage can stay focused on spiritual nourishment and following in the footsteps of St. Matthew versus logistical headaches. Time to pack your bags. How can praying the St. Matthew prayer help to make me a saint? Seeking sainthood may seem like a lofty goal. However, regularly praying the St. Matthew prayer can be a stepping stone on the journey toward becoming a saint. Here's how. The prayer's petition to live an evangelical life directs our focus toward virtuous actions and service to others. This imitates the saints. St. Matthew provides a relatable model as a convert who abandoned worldly ways. His example inspires hope we too can become saints. Asking for St. Matthew's guidance and intercession unites us more closely with the communion of saints who lift us higher. The beautiful language elevates our minds and helps us grow in the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Reflecting on the prayer frequently will plant its petitions more deeply in our hearts, bearing fruit through our choices. Reciting this prayer of the Church connects us to the mystical body of Christ across time, uniting us in holiness. It reminds us of our true purpose in life, to know, love, and serve God, becoming the saints He intends us to be. While only through God's grace can we hope to be saints, praying the St. Matthew prayer plants the seed that the Holy Spirit can nurture into blossoming sanctity. Learning about our Catholic saints and church history will deepen your faith so much. Prayer is also such an important aspect of growing in your faith. Meditating on the gospel for at least a few minutes a day can dramatically deepen your faith. Are you familiar with the gospel? I believe that you were brought to this video today for a reason. Let's take a moment to think about the gospel and what the religion of Christianity is all about. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and that we all need a savior because of this. Romans 3.23 because of this, God sent his one and only Son to us to be the atonement for our sins. As it says in John 3:16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. You see, in Malachi 3-6 God says, I am the Lord, and I do not change. He has always required a blood sacrifice for the atonement of sins. He says this in Leviticus 17:11, For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. He also repeats this in the New Testament when he says in Hebrews 9:22, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is why Jesus, God in the flesh, had to come into the world and live under the law, which are the Ten Commandments to redeem those who were under the law. Have you obeyed the entire law of the Lord? Have you ever stolen anything, even if it was small? Have you ever lied? Have you ever not kept Sunday as a day of rest and worship of the Lord? Have you ever looked with lust at another person that you were not married to or done physical things with a person you were not married to? Have you ever desired something that your friend or neighbor had that didn't belong to you? To be honest, it's easy to break these laws because our nature is inclined to sin. The Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves ourselves, and the truth is not in us. However, it says in 1 John 1 to 8 and 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What a merciful and loving God we serve. Because God loves us so much, in Isaiah 53, 10, it says, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush Jesus when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the cross, and rose from the dead. He conquered sin and death, and because he rose from the dead, he promises to raise us from the dead after we die too. This is the glorious gospel. The next step after a person has received the gospel is to go to RCIA at your local Catholic church. You can search for the nearest church on Google and call them to see when the next classes start. If they don't start for some months, you can still meet with the director and get some books to read to tie you over before it starts. I will be praying for you about all of this. This is the road to eternal life. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos about inspiring saints. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video.
Make sure to check out the links below in the description so you can grab your We Are Saintly Catholic t-shirt and be a part of our We Are Saintly Catholic community by signing up for our email list and joining us on Patreon. I give you free saint printables each month, a free We Are Saintly shirt each year, shout outs, and more in Patreon as a special thank you for being a part of this amazing Catholic community. Are you considering taking a Catholic pilgrimage to see Saint Matthew after learning about him today? I've traveled to lots of places and I'm well versed in the things you may need along the way so I've compiled a list of links in the description below where you can find cheap flights, car rentals, destination packages, and more. Save this video so you have those links handy and visit our blog to learn about more holy saints that will ignite your faith. I sincerely hope that learning about taking a Catholic pilgrimage to see Saint Matthew has brought you a sense of comfort and tranquility. If you found this video to be beneficial, please do not hesitate to give it a thumbs up, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel. Always remember to keep the faith and believe in the power of prayer. May God bless you and provide you with guidance on your journey. Until we meet again, take care of yourself, keep going to church, reading your Bible, praying your rosary, and sharing the gospel. I'm praying for you in all of this.